Well, joining me now to discuss the day's issues, Alan Tudge from the Liberals and Andrew Lee joining me here in the Canberra studio from the ALP. Thank you both for joining us. First you, Alan Tudge, on this mission in Ukraine, a reminder as if any was needed of the dangers posed to those Australian Federal Police and others going to the site with this heavy shelling, uh, cancelling or at least uh, uh, delaying the operation. I think that's right, David. I I think the word though is delaying rather than cancelling. Mm. Uh, we have an absolute determination to ensure that the um, remains can be um, secured and identified and, and returned back to Australia. But uh, we want to get in there. We had hoped to get in there last night our time and we'll be monitoring the situation very closely. And when it is safe to do so, the team led by the Netherlands um, but including Australian Federal Police, uh, will be going in there to monitor the site, secure the remains and bring them home. Andrew Lee, the cooperation of the rebels is crucial to this mission. Yeah. And as such, we've seen the Prime Minister uh, appropriately uh, temper his language towards them compared to the descriptions that were used about a week ago. Uh, are you uh, satisfied that everything is being done to minimise the risks for our police and others? Absolutely, David. I mean, this is uh, fully supported by the opposition. I think Alan spoke well in speaking about the importance of uh, securing the remains there. Uh, one of the victims was in my own electorate and the memorial service was held for her last week and it, it just uh, brings home to me how important it is for all of those families uh, to secure the victims' remains and, and securing that crash site, absolutely vital. Yeah, and the Prime Minister has been pretty much universally praised for his handling of this crisis and that's been reflected today in a Galaxy poll published in News Corp papers which shows uh, the vast majority of those who were asked who has shown the best or the most leadership have nominated Tony Abbott well above Barack Obama and David Cameron. Uh, not surprising, uh, would you say, uh, Alan Tudge? Uh, David, I don't want to comment on the polls. Um, mm. uh, Tony Abbott and Julie Bishop and the leadership team have been 100% focused on this particular mission. We've had very good support from the opposition as exemplified again by Andrew Lee just now. Um, the task is at hand to secure the remains, to support the investigation and to bring the remains home. That is the square focus of the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister with great support from Bill Shorten. Andrew Lee, uh, Tanya Plibersek yesterday said that the opposition wasn't getting every briefing that they'd asked for. Um, do you know if, if that has, has been resolved to a satisfactory level? Oh, I don't, David. Mm. OK. But you're still satisfied with the full cooperation bipartisanship that's being shown? Oh, look, in, in broad, ter broad terms, this is an operation that enjoys bipartisan support. OK, well, let's move on to another issue, uh, which is the issue of asylum seekers. And today we have seen the Immigration Minister, Scott Morrison, speaking about this group of asylum seekers that has now been brought to Australian shores, in fact, the Australian mainland, and are expected to today be interviewed by Indian consular officials, about 18 of them being held at the Curtin Detention Facility in Western Australia. Uh, Scott Morrison says that, uh, well, India is a safe country, a vibrant democracy, and as such, it, it seems that many of these asylum seekers will be returned to India. Andrew Lee, is that appropriate? Well, this is a situation which could have been resolved weeks ago, but for Scott Morrison's ego, I think, David. I mean, leaving these asylum seekers, uh, and nearly 160 of them, at sea for, uh, for the best part of a month is, I think, a, a serious mistake. Uh, they should have been brought to Christmas Island weeks ago. Uh, and I, it worries me that, uh, that we have the High Court making asylum seeker policy uh, rather than Scott Morrison. Well, Scott, uh, Scott Morrison uh, disputes that. He says the High Court has nothing to do with uh, what has ended up happening here. Uh, I suppose the question is, uh, do you, uh, you're saying it should have been done earlier, but you, you don't have a problem at all with, uh, from what you're saying, what's actually happening in terms of the way that they are being processed? I think the asylum seekers being brought to Christmas Island makes sense. Uh, just the standoff in the high seas was, uh, was uh, uh, turning into a farce. I think it was uh, a dangerous situation for Australian personnel and for the asylum seekers uh, to leave people at sea there. 
Uh, Labor's view on asylum seeker policy is that we ought to be able to take more refugees. We're disappointed the government cut back the refugee intake by a third when they came to office. Uh, but that it's absolutely important to make sure that we stop drownings at sea. Uh, and the refugee resettlement agreement we put in place prior to the election um, saw a 90% drop in asylum seeker boat arrivals. I don't think the sort of situation that we've seen over recent weeks uh, has, has helped achieve either of those two humanitarian goals of taking more migrants uh, and uh, to ensuring we take more refugees and seeing fewer drownings. Alan Tudge, quite a bit to respond to there, uh, perhaps starting with the delay in these asylum seekers coming to Australia. Was it acceptable for them to be floating on the high seas for, for so long? Well, they're always under good care the entire time. I'm not going to comment on the operational matters at sea, but they were under good care the entire time and they weren't in danger. Our policy has always been to ensure that the boats are turned around where it's safe to do so, where other measures are taken, including disrupting the people smugglers business at the points of port, in this case in India or in Indonesia or elsewhere, um, and take other measures before they get to Australia. The very last response that we want to do is, is um, allow boats to get to Australia. And that's quite different to the Labor response, which tends to, uh, if you like, put out the water taxi almost straight away in order to ferry those people into Australian shores. From our the immigration that's minister the last says measure. that they've come from this uh, safe country, that they are essentially economic migrants. Are you confident that should they be sent back to India, they will be safe, that their safety and security will be guaranteed? Well, India is a large, vibrant democracy. We have great trading relationships with them. We, of course, they're our largest source of immigration these days. Um, it is a tourist destination. Um, most of the people on board that boat were, we believe, are Indian citizens or Indian residents. Uh, the Indian government has said that they will uh, uh, accept back all of the Indian citizens and indeed consider accepting the uh, non-citizen um, Indian residents back to India. And we believe that they will be treated uh, safely and with care um, when they are back in India. Um, it is a safe place to go at the moment. It's a vibrant democracy um, and we think that uh, they can be repatriated. OK, we've got to take a quick break here on AIM Agenda. We will look at the government's expanded Work for the Dole program after this break. From the very first days, your child starts to write their future. That's why you've always given them the best. If you decide to move on from breastfeeding, there's Aptimal Gold Plus Toddler. With a unique blend including prebiotic zinc and iron to nutritionally support their immune system and omega-3 DHA for brain development. Help lay foundations today for your child's future progress. Aptimal Gold Plus Toddler. Your child's future starts today. <coughs> when you're feeling croaky, husky or horsey, the active ingredients and soothers provide medicated relief in every lozenge. Soothe your sore throat. Finding everything okay? Uh, I work for a different insurance company, but my car policy is getting a little too expensive. Good news for you. Progressive is 100% online, which means we can save you heaps on our car insurance. All online? I love this place. Dad? Steve. Oh, it's an office party. Visit progressiveonline.com.au to see if you could save. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy sensational savings at Target, Australia's home of Lego, with 20% off all Lego toys. That's 20% off all your favourite Lego toys. The greatest toy sale on earth. On now at Target. You don't need to be a big business to get the best possible travel rates for your business. You just need to bring an expert on board. A business travel expert dedicated to saving you time and money. At Corporate Traveller, we offer 24-7 service, real savings, flexible payment options and clear reporting. And there's not even a contract to sign. Some business decisions just make good sense, don't they? Corporate Traveller. It makes sense to bring an expert on board. This is Campylobacter jejuni, a tummy-churning, far-from-home, trip-spoiling bug 
But what if you don't know the local word for bug? We'll help card members find a doctor who speaks their language in the middle of the night or the middle of nowhere. With 13,830 medical cases sorted worldwide last year, it's all part of the Just What the Doctor Ordered service we deliver daily. American Express. Realise the potential. Delicious new So Good Almond and Coconut Milk goes with absolutely everything. And with a third less calories than light milk, you can afford to go nuts with it. This week on Sports Night, the latest from the Commonwealth Games as Australia tries to maintain the rage. Vibe in there was just electric. We'll get the latest too from the NRL, AFL and the Super Rugby Grand Final qualifiers. All your sporting needs only on Sports Night on Sky News. Thanks for your company on AM Agenda. The government is expected to today provide details on its expanded Work for the Dole program that will see job seekers compelled to conduct up to 40 job searches a month and also work up to 25 hours in community service. I'm still joined by Andrew Lee and Alan Tudge. Alan Tudge, first to you on this. What's the need? Why, why is this program being extended, expanded? Well, work for the doll can be good for the individual and good for the community. It's good for the individual because it keeps their skills high, it keeps them work ready because they're active and engaged, um, and it means that they can go to an employer and show that they have in fact been working up to 25 hours per week already. And it's good for the community because in, re in return for a welfare payment, that individual can give back to the community through doing some constructive projects which all of us can benefit from. We're told that an additional $900 million will be spent over three years to actually extend the scheme. Is that money that the government would hope to, uh, to get back in higher employment in the long term? Well, in the, in the past when Work for the Doll was introduced by the Howard government, the, uh, the number of long-term unemployed that went into employment in fact doubled. But Work for the Doll is only one part of the scheme. Um, we've also got expanded training opportunities, we've got mobility options whereby there are payments and incentives for people to, to move for a job. There's wage subsidies in place for um, people over 50 and for younger people. Um, all of these schemes are put in place to ensure that there's every incentive, every encouragement, every motivation for people to get a job wherever it might be. Andrew Lee, is this a program that will achieve its goals that will actually benefit Australia? David, I'm a data guy, so I basically look at what the evidence shows, and we have one good evaluation of Work for the Dole, uh, commissioned by Tony Abbott when he was Employment Minister in 2003. And that study by uh, Jeff Borland and Yiping Seng compared participants and non-participants and found that Work for the Dole increased joblessness. So it was actually actively doing harm. Uh, now, the how, so? how, how does that work? It's a perfectly reasonable question to ask. How could a, a Work for the Dole program actually uh, cause problems? And they found that it was causing a lock-in effect, uh, that because people were doing Work for the Dole activities, they were spending less time looking for regular jobs. This scheme and would also f compel them to conduct 40 job searches a month, though. Would that uh, mitigate those issues? Uh, well, uh, if, it, if it did, that would be terrific. But we need to be very careful in this space not to let ideology substitute for evidence. Uh, I think one of the standard problems as a, a Labor economist that, uh, that we strike is that there's a lot of programs that sound good but don't actually deliver. And when your only credible study is one commissioned by the Prime Minister that showed that the program made the problem worse, then you might want to put in place some rigorously trialled evaluations rather than simply plough on ahead uh, where ideology demands. Sure, the, the early 2000s were a decade of, of falling unemployment and, and there was long-term unemployment falling through that period. Uh, but work for the doll uh, hampered that effort rather than helping it. Alan Tudge, what's your response to those claims that this is more ideology at play? and that ultimately it, uh, it may not work. Well, a couple of points on that. Firstly, the data showed that the number of long-term unemployed that um, got work after the introduction of work for the Dole back in um, the Howard era actually doubled from 20% to 40% of long-term unemployed got employment. The second point I'd make is that the Labor Party in government actually kept a proportion of work for the Dole throughout their entire term. So Andrew's criticisms of 
the Abbott government would equally apply to the, um, the Rudd-Gillard-Rudd government, um, should they be correct. But the final point I'd make is that this isn't ideology. In part, it is about um, individuals who are in receipt of welfare giving back to the community for that welfare. And I don't think that there is anything wrong with that. Moreover, it keeps those people's skills high because they're getting up each day, having to contribute, having to go through work-like activities. So instead of sitting on the couch and becoming debilitated over time, which does occur, then they are staying active and they're more likely to get a job subsequently. OK, well, I want to just look briefly at the uh, New South Wales Labor conference that was held over the weekend. The opposition leader, Bill Shorten, who had just touched down after a week in the United States, delivered a rousing speech to the party faithful. He took aim and personal aim at that at the federal treasurer, Joe Hockey. Take a look. This arrogant, cigar-chomping cigar treasurer, his hopeless story reveals that it took Tony Abbott to block him from deeper, harder cuts. Seriously, if it's up to Tony Abbott to tell you you've gone too far, then you've well and truly gone too far. Alan Tudge, uh, he also uh, took aim at uh, the uh, Treasurer's personal wealth and said that it had made him essentially out of touch with everyday Australia. Uh, what do you make of, of that attack? I think it was just some good old fashioned class warfare coming from the opposition leader who thinks that he's still a union leader rather than a leader of Australia. And I would simply request that he should drop the class war rhetoric and focus on the interests of all Australians. And I mean, the other thing I'd say is that I never heard him make these comments in relation to um, Prime Minister Rudd, who was um, a multimillionaire. Um, and he didn't make those comments then. And I don't think he should be making the comments about Joe Hockey. Andrew Lee, as you pointed out, you're a numbers man and you don't often play the man. Uh, what do you make of, of your leader, Bill Shorten, doing just that? Oh, I'm always surprised, uh, David, that it's class warfare when you refer to a budget that takes away one-tenth of the income of the poorest single parents uh, and, uh, and that the act of putting together that budget, oh, that's, that's not class warfare. It's all right to take away a, a one, no, one buck out of ten from the poorest sole there, parents. But that it is class warfare when you criticise those who implement it for being out of touch and, and for being unable or unwilling to put themselves in the shoes of, of what it's like for a sole parent to make ends meet. But he said he was out of touch uh, and linked that to his, his personal wealth. I just don't see how somebody uh, who had been willing to walk in the shoes of poor single parents could think it was reasonable to take away a tenth of their income, as this budget has done. I mean, it's a budget which is not only taken away from the bottom, but has also given more to the top uh, through additional superannuation tax breaks, a uh, billion dollars for multinationals to profit shift. And so there, I think it's a, it's a fair critique for us to then say, uh, well, where are, your, where are your values? What are the values in which a budget like that could possibly be grounded? The, the budget pain, it seems, Alan Tudge is still very much uh, in place, according to this Galaxy poll out today, uh, which shows that uh, the Prime Minister is trailing Bill Shorten as preferred Prime Minister, that the Coalition is trailing Labor as well uh, in terms of uh, the two-party preferred vote. Well, in part because we're delivering a tough budget and we acknowledge that. And, but the reason we're doing this, David, and we've said this before repeatedly on this program, is because Labor left the finances in an absolute mess with the six biggest budget deficits in Australian political history, with deficits as far as the eye could see, and we are trying to take some responsible measures to bring the budget back into surplus. We're not rushing this. It's actually coming down back into surplus over time. But if we don't do that, then the debt will continue to rise year on, year out, all the way out to almost $700 billion. And that means that should there be another international shock, then we would be in serious risk. Now, Andrew Lee and his party, the Labor Party, used to believe that having a surplus was important. They never delivered it, but at least their rhetoric was the case. But now they seem to have abandoned that altogether. They seem to have abandoned any sense of responsibility to try to support the budget getting back into balance. And I ask Andrew Lee, who is the Assistant Treasurer, you know, where are your plans? 
to get the budget back into balance because all they are doing now is saying no to every single measure, including, might I, I might add, to the savings measures which they themselves put up. OK, well, I'll get you, give you a chance to respond to that. But I did just want to mention, you know, a lot of the criticism towards Joe Hockey last week was in relation to this new book that he has uh, given full cooperation to. Uh, Greg Combe is also releasing a somewhat controversial book this week. And uh, Andrew Lee, you yourself are, in, are uh, releasing a book today, I think it is, uh, The Economics of Just About Everything. Uh, any, uh, any mud slinging going on in this economic tome? Well, it's, it's funny, David. Uh, my seven-year-old son said, well, it's the economics of just about everything, so surely you've got the economics of dragons in there. And uh, <laughs> the answer is no, no economics of dragons and uh, no economics of leadership either. But uh, uh, love sports, uh, a bit of art, a bit of music, Essentially the message that economics has not only something useful to say about politics and the sort of issues that Alan and I are enjoying debating this morning, uh, but is also a, a tool for helping us make better decisions in life, uh, whether that's uh, uh, in dating and uh, trying to lose weight, uh, in trying to, trying to quit smoking uh, or in trying to stop ourselves procrastinating. Alan, I think I think when's your I think book coming your out? <laughs> I was just about to say, I think in Andrew's last book he actually advocated for a Medicare co-payment and I was just wondering if this book also includes uh, such measures. Oh, I love it, Alan. Uh, unfortunately, that was a, uh, an opinion piece written over a, de over a decade ago. But I will get you up to speed with a back catalogue uh, by, uh, by giving, giving you a copy when, uh, when Parliament next sits. And I forgive you, too, for referring to me as the Assistant Treasurer rather than the Shadow Assistant Treasurer, given that, let's face it, the country hasn't had an Assistant, assistant Treasurer, treasurer uh, since, uh, since last December. OK, well, we're out of time, Alan Tudge, Andrew Lee. Thank you both very much for joining Thanks, us. We'll David. have more Thanks, on AM Thanks. Agenda coming up after this.